Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Pugh. I'm a senior lecturer in maths at Cardiff University. And my research interests are in pure maths and also in maths education. So in this video, I'm going to describe to you a simple maths problem, but it's one which has got an incredibly beautiful solution. Now, for this problem, we're going to need complex numbers. Some of you will be already familiar with complex numbers, especially if you've done further maths at A level. But if you're not familiar yet, uh, there are plenty of good videos out there that you could watch to give yourself an introduction. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to give you a very quick introduction to them. So what we do is uh, we define a completely new number, which we denote by i, and we define it to be a number that squares to give us minus one. So you know that there's no real number that squares to give minus one. So this is a completely new type of number. And you can basically think of it as a square root of minus one. Then a complex number uh, is just a combination uh, a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is this new number, this imaginary uh, unit, this imaginary number that we've defined. You could also think of a complex number as a times 1 plus b times i, if you like. So what we've got is multiples of 1, which is the real unit, and multiples of i, which is called the imaginary unit sometimes. Uh, and so complex numbers are combinations of these two things. And so what we've got is a two-dimensional plane of numbers. Uh, so we call this a complex plane. And so for example, we might have minus three plus two i. And so we get the complex number minus three plus two i, which is here in the complex plane. Now these numbers are called complex, not because they're complicated, but because they're made up of two different parts. So a bit like a, a shopping complex, if you like, is made up of more than uh, one shop. And the real numbers, they're a special case of the complex numbers. So they're the case where the B here is zero. Now, why do we want complex numbers? Uh, well, one simple reason is that they give us solutions to equations like x squared plus one is zero. Okay, so, there's no real solution to this, but now if we allow complex numbers, we can get solutions to these kind of equations. There are lots of other good historical reasons mathematically uh, why we want complex numbers, um, but they actually also turn out to be very important for all sorts of applications, um, including some very real world applications, particularly in electronics and technology. We wouldn't have um, half of the modern technology that we've got today if it wasn't for complex numbers. And you can find lots of videos on the internet talking about some of these things. But in this video, I want to show you some of the beauty of complex numbers. So we're going to look at solutions to a complex equation, uh, but this is going to lead us to some really beautiful maths. And what's perhaps even more amazing is that the equations themselves are really very simple. So the starting place is uh, a sequence of numbers. So Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3, and so on, going on forever. And the rule is that we always start with Z0 being zero, and then to get the next term in the sequence, we define it by the rule Zn plus one is Zn squared plus C. So to get the next term in the sequence, we square the previous term and then add this number C, which is just a number that we choose and fix. And it's the same number C that we add each time. Now, one of the things that mathematicians want to do with this kind of a sequence would be understand how it behaves, uh, particularly for different values of C. And you can try different values of C. It's worth doing. Um, plug different values of C in and see what happens. And essentially, what you'll find is that one of two things happen. So, for instance, if we put C as 3, what do we get? Well, we start with Z0 is 0. Let's compute Z1. Well, Z1 is Z0 squared plus c so zero squared plus three we get three z2 is three squared plus three so we get 12 z3 is 12 squared plus three so we get 147 z4 is 147 squared plus three so we get 21,612. and i think you can see what's happening here so as we keep going the sequence is going to blow up the number is going to get larger and larger in size very very quickly so we call this value of c unstable c equals three the point three is unstable. So unstable values of C are values where the sequence blows up. We could consider, for instance, something like C is minus two. So what happens then? Well, again, we start with Z naught equals naught. 
So Z1 is Z0 squared plus C, so 0 squared plus minus 2, we get minus 2. Z2 is minus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2, which is 2. Z3 is 2 squared minus 2, which is 2. Z4 is 2 squared minus 2, which is 2, and hopefully you can see what happens here. We're just going to keep getting 2, 2, 2 all the time. So this sequence doesn't blow up, and so we call this value of C stable. So stable values of C are values where the sequence doesn't blow up. Now they may jump around, here they don't, here they just stay at 2, but they may, they in most cases will jump around and move around, but they don't blow up, and so we call them stable. And so the problem, the math problem, would be simply which values of C are stable? Try to classify or find the solution C which are stable. Now, although this is a simple sequence, and although the statement of this problem is very simple, this turns out to be a very uh, difficult uh, problem to answer. So it's, uh, yeah, it's deceptively tricky. And the solution set, so that is the set of all values of C which are stable, that's called the Mandelbrot set. You may have heard of it. Uh, if you haven't, it's incredibly intriguing and beautiful. And you may be thinking to yourself, oh, come on, how can, a, how can a set of solutions be beautiful? Okay, isn't this mass? How can it be beautiful? Well, I'll leave you to decide once we've got to the end whether or not you agree with me. But I would be incredibly surprised if you didn't agree with me. Okay, no matter how sceptical you might be, uh, but we'll see. Now, the first published image of this set was in 1978 by Robert Brooks and Peter Matelsky, and this is it. So as you can see, what they've done, there's lots of X's here or stars, and what they've done is just test all of these different values of C to see whether or not they are stable. Now, remember that back in 1978, they wouldn't have had access to the kind of computers that we do today. So this would have been quite a challenge to test all these different points. But they've, what's plotted here are all the points C that they tested that turned out to be stable. And it's a kind of intriguing set of points. It doesn't seem to have an obvious uh, pattern or shape. Here's a slightly more detailed image. And so again, this image would have been produced by testing each point, okay? each of these points of C and testing whether the sequence is stable. And millions of values of C would have been used in this case. So isn't it a weird solution set? And if you look at the general boundary, so the outside of the shape, um, that boundary is called a fractal curve. So you may have heard of a fractal before. A fractal is basically a never-ending pattern, or uh, to use more formal math, mathematical language, uh, a fractal uh, is, is a subset of the plane. It has a self-similarity property, we call it. But actually, even this picture doesn't really show us uh, just how amazing or how weird even that this set is. So you get a better hint at this from this next image. But what we've done here uh, in this image is added colour outside the set. So the Mandelbrot set itself, the set of solutions, is still the black part. And the colours outside the set, they're there to indicate how many iterations were needed to be able to determine that the points were not stable, we're not in the set. So the more yellow or ready points, they're points uh, that the, the sequence looks stable for a long time, but if you go far enough along the sequence, eventually you find that it's going to blow up. Okay, so that means though that these points are very close to being stable, and so where you see the little stringy bits, like little arms um, going out, little tentacles going out, especially the white bits, um, there there are going to be some points which are in the set and it's almost like very thin here so there's some black bits but they're so thin you can't see them and so the different colors are allowing us to see some of this incredible structure which just wouldn't be would be too small for us to see otherwise but really to see just how crazy this set is what you need to do is zoom in um, and there are lots of videos out there zooming in on parts of the Mandelbrot set uh, and there are also lots of different interactive viewers you can get to online or, or download, and you can then zoom in on the bits of the set that you want to. So I've got here um, a, a package, Chaos, X-A-O-S, which you can download from the internet. And this allows you to zoom in uh, so far. 
So let's choose a point maybe in here and let's see what happens if we zoom in. One thing you'll notice that we've got here is that, oh look, we've got another shape which looks just like the original manual set. We can keep zooming in and we can zoom in on some of these stringy bits. I think, okay, we're going to get near the, we're going to be able to see sort of the, the fine detail now. And then as you keep going in, more and more intricate structure appears. And just when you think you're getting near to seeing the full detail, more new details seem to appear. Remember, it's the black bit is the mandible set, and it's very hard to see the black bits. Um, they're so thin in all this bit, but the colours are helping us at least see where they will be or would be. So let me zoom out just so we can see how this bit fitted back into the original set. Now, let me just remind you again what this is. The mandible set, these points C, they're the points C which are stable. So that means we have a sequence that we defined by the rule, which was just simply square the previous term and add this value C, square the term, add C, square the term, add C. It's just the value C for which that sequence doesn't blow up. Okay, the ones, the points that are stable. And the solution set is incredibly complicated and it's very fine and all of these little stringy bits which means that there's points of C which are in and then you move a fraction away and there's points of C which are not in. And yet you move a bit further up and perhaps you're back to a point which is in. And you can see uh, if you zoom in on different parts, you'll see swirls and um, this bit that's down here is called the uh, uh, seahorse valley. And there's all sorts of bits which look swirly and you see the Mandelbrot set reappearing slightly differently, but uh, time and time again. But the sequence we started with was really quite simple. And yet the points C, which are stable, are incredibly complicated and complex and intricate. Well, thank you for watching this video about the Mandelbrot set um, and about complex numbers. So we've learned that even though complex numbers contain an imaginary part, they're as real and as important as real numbers. We've also seen that they can be unimaginably beautiful. And the Mandelbrot set that we've been looking at is a solution to a very simple problem and yet no mathematician is ever going to be able to fully understand its depths. Thank you for watching.